Here we go. Jazz hands, everyone. Come on. I don't see jazz hands. <laughs> Welcome back to the Big Daddy Gun Studios. I'm Hank Strange. We are live right now, and um, this this should be a lively show if um, my Facebook post that I made this morning has any indications. It's going to be live. We've got uh, Steve from 904 Outdoors here. We've also got my friend Deputy Matt live from Cali. We've also got the Kellers, Yay. both Walter Keller and Will Killer Keller <laughs> from Safety Harbor Firearms <laughs> in the building. And we're going to talk about this uh, Florida State attorney that was pulled over by the cops. I posted a video on this. You guys can look on this. It's all over the news. And I posted, well, actually, someone shared the video with me today. And I reposted it and put a comment on there. Basically, my comment was, um, you know, if you want to make changes, the best place to make it is from the inside. And, um, you know, I put that up there. For some reason, it, this one got really heated. So <laughs> it's, not, it's not really what I intended to, to do. But I figured this is a good opportunity to have someone from law enforcement come on. I asked my friend, Deputy Matt. You see him there. He's ready to talk about this, right? You're a very thorough guy. That's what I like about you. Huh? As ready as I'm going to be. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, do you do you want to run down this a little bit, or should we pull up the article here? How do you want to do this? You have this on your phone, too. You know, actually, here, let me pull up the article. I'll read it for you guys. For anyone who's looking, it says, uh, video shows police trying to explain why they pulled over a Florida state attorney. Just to give anyone who's listening to this a background, uh, Florida has what, who, who I think is like the first, uh, you know, African American, uh, black state attorney, uh, female. And I'll, I'll just read the article. Um, On the evening of June 19th, Orlando police pulled over a white Ford Fusion with tinted windows. Inside was Aramis Ayala, Florida's first and only African American state attorney. The fact the two officers who stopped her stopped her apparently didn't know. As one officer approaches Ayala's car, she's already has her driver's license in her hands. According to body camera footage of the traffic stop, what agency are you with? The officer asks Ayala as he examines her license. I'm a state attorney. She responds. And it goes on from there. I guess they, you know, they ran her plates and it came it like, you know, the plates came back weird. And that's what they that's what they pulled her over for. And, you know, there were some questions here because she wanted to know why she was pulled over or why did they and why did they run the tags? And, you know, I think uh, the officer that was talking to her mentioned that, you know, she's got tents, but he doesn't actually have a tent me meter. But, you know, that's a, a reason, I guess, that you can use to pull people over. It, it really wasn't. Um, it, in my opinion, looking at the video, it wasn't anything too terrible. What I think about it is good that we've got, you know, there's lots of complaints and, and stuff like that going on right now. This is like a very uh, tense period in history, I guess. I think it's always been a little tense between um, the regular civilian population and then the police or law enforcement population, which are, are civilians, but civilians that we entrust to do a certain job. It's been kind of tense lately. And um, this is just like another another thing out there. And I think it's a good thing that she gets it from this perspective. She gets to look at it to, to feel what it's like to get to be pulled over, you know, um, and then maybe look into this and see exactly what's going on there. Anything? How do you feel about that, Matt? I know you looked at this whole situation. Yeah. I I guess I kind of took for granted that somebody who's a state's attorney would know that cops run license plates when they're driving around in cars. It just seems to be, <laughs> I know people who aren't cops who understand that that's what cops do when we're driving around in cars. They do it constantly. Yeah. The fact right. that she was kind of off by the fact that they said they ran her plate and came back with no record on file, she seemed kind of taken aback by that, which I thought was awful. Right. Granted, I think it's new in so that maybe. So uh, um, let me see. I'm ha let me. I'm going to turn up your microphone if I can a little bit here, so we can hear you a little bit better. So yeah, you're saying that uh, we should take it for granted that police officers are out there running the plates, right? 
that's one of the things that we do when we're driving around in cars. Yeah. So, um, as law enforcement, you know, do you do you feel like the rest of us out there should just take it for granted and, and think that this is a good thing, that our plates are constantly being run? We should just feel it's like for our protection. That's what I'm trying to figure out here because the way that I look at it, like, you know, it kind of it's kind of like to me part of the police state, right? Like, why are the why are my plates always being run? Like, maybe I should do something wrong before people start looking into stuff. I understand what you're saying, um, and I I, I I I sort of agree with your sentiment at some point. It, I'm somewhat torn on the, the issue. Um, however, in order to drive on public highways, you've got to have a legally registered vehicle, which is what cops are looking for when they're running your plates. Mm -hmm. And a valid driver's license. They're all in the battle looking for, you know, it, it's, it kind of goes along the same lines. It, it, if you want to take it to one extreme, you can look at the, uh, the sovereign citizen types who say that they're the uh, free traveler. What is it? Uh, Oh, I can't remember the exact like, verbiage that they use. Um, I don't recall what the exact wording is, but it comes the, the stuff that they recite, which they have memorized. They recite it. It's from the uh, Articles of Confederation. Mm -hmm. and those guys they'll ramble it off, saying that they don't need to have a license, that they don't need to have registration <laughs> of the vehicle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, so, I, I mean, the, the people that claim they're sovereign. Yeah, they're pretty sovereign. Mm -hmm. So here's the thing. You know what? First, look, I, first of all, I think people want to know who you are, Matt. Like, get a little bit of background and in your industry experience. So let's let's talk about that a little bit, if you don't mind. I mean, it's kind of like stepping back, the comments, sure. so that we can uh, get folks. I, I've been a deputy sheriff in Northern California. I can't say what agency I work for, but uh, in Northern California for 22 years now. Right. Okay, and then you've been writing articles and things like that for a while. I know we've we've talked about different things. I started writing politics stuff uh, 2011 and started writing for a gun blog. Uh, originally, the bank switch, and now I'm over full 30 right for the blog there. Uh, that goes back, I want to say, about five years now. Yeah, and if you guys, if Matt looks a little familiar, if you've been watching my channel, we've been friends, uh, I think, probably as long as I've been doing this. To my first year at Chacho. Yeah. So, and then I harass you every year from then on. So, so we always meet up at Chacho because you're you're in uh, California and I'm out in Florida. So, um, you know, to to get back to this whole thing, yeah, I think I understand that. I think that I think we should all understand that we hire law enforcement to do a job, right? Correct. You know. Um, now, I'm going to assume as a police officer, you've been pulled over, right? Yeah, not, not in uniform, over. but you've been pulled over, right? I've been pulled over uh, since I was a cop, and I was pulled over a lot before I was a cop. So yeah, I've been I've been on both ends of it. Okay, so when you get pulled over, typically, how do you feel about that? Like, what kind of emotions go through on your side? Not as I, I know we you know we're gonna obviously talk about what it feels like as the police officer pulling someone over, but what does it feel like when you get pulled over from the other side yeah. of that? Generally, when I get pulled over, I know why I got pulled over. So, I mean, it's... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. That's what I was going to say. <laughs> I've been in the car driving with you, Matt. You should get pulled over a lot more. <laughs> uh, am I back? Yeah, you're back. All right. There's my uh, crappy middle-of-the-nowhere internet. Yeah. yeah. So... <laughs> yeah, I was saying that I've been driving with you. Uh, personally, I think you should get pulled over a lot more. <laughs> You do drive like a police officer, by the way, no matter what vehicle you're in. I'm pretty sure you drive it like that Beetle that you have like that. Well, yeah, well, currently I'm a, a driver, a, a, a driver's training instructor for law enforcement. So. Oh, oh, nice. <laughs> I'm on a track all day long, yeah. so I, yeah, I tend to drive a little Yeah. So, how, so, I mean, how does it feel? With, with all seri seriousness, I'm sure, you know, everyone here on this panel has probably been pulled over at least once. I know I've definitely been pulled over a little infamously. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I so, can tell you um, sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead. I, I wanted you to get out like how you feel when it happens. I, 
I don't, you know, honestly, I, it, it doesn't bother me. It doesn't affect me probably the same way as it does someone who's not in my shoes. Mm -hmm. It, it's happened quite a few times. It, I was talking about, a, um, I, at one point I was pulled over when I was driving an unmarked sheriff's vehicle. It was a, it was an undercover car and it had similar to what I'm assuming she has, where it was just a issued plate to the department and it didn't list any vehicle specific information and when you ran that plate it came back no record on file okay so and then so just so everyone been, understands that because i probably you know i'm thinking in my mind that would have some kind of indication that it's a government plate but you're saying not really right no that just that could mean that the Lexus plate is so old it's just fallen out of dmv's computer system at okay. least in california every state's dmv is different so i can't speak specifically to, to florida's right but i can't California's DMV. It, with California, if the plate hasn't been used in seven years, it drops out of the system. So if it's a plate they went to a wrecking yard and pulled off of some car and slapped it on theirs, it would shoot a new record on file. Okay. So that, I mean, so that's what these guys would probably, because, you know, the thing is, uh, I mean, when I, I've, I've been pulled over, and I think when you get pulled over, from my point of view, um, you know, I've been pulled over several times and I really didn't know what I was doing wrong. I'll be honest with you. So in the video that I have out there, I didn't know what I was doing wrong. And I have like radar laser detector in my car. It was going off like crazy. You don't see it on the video. That's the problem with these videos. I think on both sides that people don't see everything that happened. Um, but in my case, my thing was going off for miles and there were like maybe 20, 30 cruisers or unit police units out there. You could just see them. I wasn't going fast or anything like that. And I really didn't know what, I had no clue what was going on in my case. And so the first thing that starts happening is like, you know, what the hell, this is like a serious police action. And I'm sure in her case, it seems like she didn't know why either. You know? Right. Yeah. So that like, go ahead. So like what, what I'm thinking is, you know, when you pull someone over, you immediately create these, a situation it's like, almost like rolling the dice, right? Because you don't know what's going to happen. They don't know what's going to happen. You don't know what's going to happen. Is that right? Some of the time. Most most of the time, at least in my experience, I'm not a traffic cop. So if I was stopping you, you were generally doing something really stupid. Mm -hmm. uh, so most of the time when I stopped somebody, they knew why I was stopping. They ran a stop sign. They were going 20 miles an hour with the speed limit right in front of a cop car. Stuff like that. It's it's not. It wasn't it wasn't a mystery as to why they were getting stopped. Mm -hmm. Traffic cops are much more, uh, they're, they're much less lenient. They're gonna, not going to cut you nearly as much slack because that's their primary duty is going out and enforcing traffic laws. So they might stop somebody who's going five over and that person has no clue that they were going five over the speed limit. Mm -hmm. With my mother, when she got her first ticket when I was like 16 years old, she had no clue that she was over the speed limit. She was doing almost, I think she was like 17 miles an hour over the speed limit. Mm -hmm. So. She didn't know why she was getting pulled over. She didn't know what the cop car with the red light behind her was, what she was supposed to do. So, yeah, she was driving for a long time and had never been stopped before. Yeah. And I think, I mean, let's I, go ahead. No, I get that some people don't have, have a clue why they're getting stopped. Yeah. So, no, and I understand, I, I understand when people are like genuinely like what you're saying is, you know, you're doing something wrong. And I think in this case with her, she wasn't doing and the officer, if you look at the video, didn't say that she was doing anything wrong, except that there was something weird going on with her plate. And then right. he said, well, you know, and also your windows are tinted, but I don't have a tint meter. So obviously they weren't out there pulling over people that had tinted windows. Uh, you know what? I'm, I'm a, this whole tinted windows thing is, a, is another issue to me. We're in Florida, man. This, it's like living on Mars. Yeah. The, the, <laughs> hey, the last time I got pulled over in Safety Harbor, we were going five over the speed limit. And um, in Safety Harbor, it's 25 everywhere unless otherwise posted. So me and Will were going along, and I'm in the Abarth which has factory tinted windows. Um, he pulls me over. He says, you know, you're going over. I said, yeah, it's probably going a little fast, you know. Then he, I, then he pulls out the little meter and does the windows, and it was cool. <laughs> there wasn't anything he could do. And, and um, we went, he didn't even ticket me. I got lucky that day. I got, I got lucky yeah. twice lately, and he let me go. Yeah. So, I mean, let's be honest here. Most of the time when people get pulled over, I think someone commented on this before. Most of the time when people get pulled over, it's – Totally fine. I mean, you know, on the, the last the last time I got pulled over, I was speeding. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but what I'm saying is, most of the time these things go down where you know, 
but he didn't write me a ticket either. Yeah, so, I mean, this is what happens. Most of the time, it's, it's not a thing. I mean, if you were doing something really egregious, like you just blew past a school bus or something like that, or you were going really, really fast, or some other really dangerous thing that you're doing, you know, obviously there's consequences to that. Most of the time, it's not an issue. But then, you know, whenever it happens, like, there's always these circumstances where it becomes issues, right? With me, I think it was, uh, it was an issue. Um, I had certain issues with it. There were certain things that happened in my thing. What happened with me, I think, was totally different from what happened here because really nothing happened. They never asked her to get out of the car. They looked at her ID. They told her this stuff. I think she asked for, um, for their cards or for their info. So obviously, you know, she was kind of like, is a, a, a state attorney your boss typically in law enforcement, Matt? Uh, well, I think she's different. I work for the sheriff. Mm -hmm. The sheriff is my boss. So the, the state attorney, uh, it, we refer to them as district attorneys out here. Um, they, they completely a different agency, so they're not my boss at all. Yeah, they oversee things, but they don't. Okay, so yeah, there. So you know, but obviously she wanted their info because she wanted to look into it, and she was wondering, like, hey, why? You know, why are people getting pulled over? Well, she didn't know that her tag was special. Yeah, and registration. I mean, it's simple. Cleared, it's not a big out. mystery. She just didn't know um, what she was driving. Yeah, but you know what the funny thing is? Like, I've, I know Matt said to me off air. I think I don't know if he said it just now, but off air, Matt said to me that this doesn't happen that often that someone has these issues with the plates. But I've heard several stories, and I was actually talking to one of my local um, my local sheriffs, and he had the same thing happen to him in a marked cruiser. So he was in Orlando. So he was in Orlando in a police car, and they did the same thing, and they told him like, "Yeah, you know, when we ran your when you ran your plate, didn't come back." And I'm kind of wondering like, what did they think? He was pretending to be a police officer. <laughs> well, they that don't is know. just Orlando cops. Um, so I think that, you know, because, okay, here's the thing. If there's something different about her plate, that's a problem, you know, what do you do about this at this moment? Because she can get pulled over every five minutes or every 10 minutes by every single police officer that she passes. If we're taking it for granted that every police officer you pass is running your plates for some reason, you know, but it seems like they're not, they're only got well, pulled every once. All right. Yeah, I don't know. You know, maybe if you've got a, a city tag on or a, or a county tag, they don't necessarily do it as much as they would if you just got a civilian tag on. I don't know. I've never been in that position, so I couldn't tell you. Yeah. My, my guess is her vehicle has got what, at least, uh, let me ask you a question, Hank. Mm -hmm. um, do uh, city, county vehicles, do they have, uh, like, exempt license plates that are for government vehicles only? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Special tag. Yeah. My guess yeah. is she probably has what looks like a regular, un, like a regular civilian car license plate. Okay. So that her car can stand out. It, well, she I has, she, has, she she was also the state's attorney that said she wasn't going to prosecute anybody with a death penalty. So the governor pulled all those cases from her. So they might yeah, have put I, her in that car just for her own safety. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I know someone someone else mentioned the death penalty thing, which I think we can go into. So I'm guessing that you guys think she should just do all these death penalty things, right? You shouldn't. How do you prejudge a death penalty case? Right. Okay. I mean, you know, come on. You're just going to say I'm not going to do it? You know, I, I – well, anyways, that's me. And, and well, yeah, I mean, okay, so that's like a, a tangent that we're going off on there, but why did she say I, – I don't know. We would have to look at, look into that. Um, um, you know, maybe I know that Babyface mentioned that, but maybe there's a reason why she said she wasn't going to deal with the death penalty stuff. Like, maybe there's people there's people simple. who are getting put to death that shouldn't be put to death. Yeah, but there's a lot that need to. Yeah, so I agree with you. <laughs> I agree with you. There's some people that need to be. There are some people that need to be put to I, death. At the same time, there's lots of people wrongfully uh, imprisoned, and but, some people that have wrongfully been put to death. It's not necessarily something we should go into lightly. But yeah. to arbitrarily say you're not going to do it is doing everybody a disservice. So, um, we had an open blind statement. She wasn't going to the death penalty in any case. I mean, when you know, there's there's cases where people are on camera shooting people. I think they're pretty guilty. 
Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay. Camera so, in those kind of cases, I wouldn't even, I don't know. We have it. Well, anyways, that's a whole other subject. We won't go into Right. That. Yeah, it is. It is. Okay. So is there something that, so is there something that could be done about the plate? So like if you pull someone over and there's something weird going on with their plate, can we, I mean, I know this is a bureaucracy, right? So can you call someone up and go, hey, this plate has a problem, fix it? Uh, well, my, my, what I was trying to get at earlier is most likely her plate, she, her car has um, that are just like the ones that are on unmarked cop cars. There's not going to, because of the way DMV deals with those records, it's not going to show up. If she had regular government plates on it, it wouldn't have been an issue. Right. My guess is she doesn't want regular government plates on her car because she doesn't want to look like a government vehicle when she's driving around. Same reason certain unmarked cop cars won't have government right. plates on them. Right. She would be unmarked. And, you know, the, the state's attorney probably doesn't need to have a, a vehicle that says, hey, I'm a state's attorney on it. No. Yeah. So I'm sure that the issue that we're all dancing around here is whether or not um, she was pulled over because she was black. They right? got, sure hey, wait a minute. Hang on a second. She had dark windows. How'd they even see her? Oh, I forgot. Sorry. Yeah, listen. I, okay. <laughs> right? Like your car, I was thinking that too. Your Tim car's got some pretty damn dark windows in a thing. So does the Abarth. You know, I mean, so unless the, the sun shines off my forehead here, I mean, you know, how do you tell? <laughs> yeah, I think that's I think that's subjective. Uh, in my case, I know that they knew who was in my car because I passed a spotter. There well, was yeah. a spotter sitting on the road looking directly into my car, and we made eye contact. Well, and there were other circumstances so, in that whole yeah, thing, and, too. and so the, the front of my car is not tinted. Right. You, know, you, don't, you, don't, you don't drive like crazy either. I've ridden with you, and I'm going, man, you need to go faster. Come on. Go, go, go. You're like, no. Well, um, do you want me to get pulled over all no. the time? You've got, a, you've, got, <laughs> yeah. you, you've got a pull-over car, though. I mean, you've got yeah, a car that yeah. says pull me over, so. Yeah. We'll see. Okay, that's a whole. That's a whole other story. Yeah. yeah. So, so now I'm not allowed. <laughs> what car should I get, Walter? No, I'm just saying, if you get no, a car would. that's a high performance car, you're going to get pulled right. over. Right. Yeah, you're because people that drive like assholes get high performance cars. You know. Right. Right. What are you trying to say, Will? <laughs> no, I'm not trying. I'm saying <laughs> this is it's not everyone that gets high performance car drives bad, but people that drive bad try to get high performance cars to like say they drive good. I mean, it's like. <laughs> yeah. So basically, what we're saying is that in in it's your profiling. opinion, yeah, that she didn't <laughs> the get profiled. The, the car yeah. gets profiled. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Listen, I think she. Okay. Obviously, she had tints. If we looked at the video, she had tints. She had tinted windows, right? And uh, from the video where it starts now, Matt, you said you looked at the video before that, before her windows roll down. I don't know whether or not you could see in there. I mean, I don't think. You no, know, they I, didn't check. They didn't check her tents to see whether it was legal or not. But this is a government vehicle. I don't think she put the tents on it. No, correct. I would agree. Huh? She was getting the plates when that guy, when she jammed the guy up about why'd you stop me, he just threw out a secondary reason. Right. But the original, the stop, put the license plate. Yeah, yeah, that's that's what that's what caused him to 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 go boop, turn the yeah. lights on. Yeah. Yeah, I think the question the question for me, like I, I don't know, I didn't. Obviously, this is a black woman who went through this thing. She's a state's attorney. And what I think, what I always tell people when we talk about these issues, like, is this happening to us because we're black and all that kind of stuff? And it may be. We don't know what's in people's hearts. So we can't assume that that's why they're doing something. We also can't assume that that's not why they're doing something. Um, but I think, you know, my, my, well, one of the things I think that's going to eventually lead to a solution is not only when we all talk about this stuff and have these discussions, but also when we actually get into these jobs, right? When people get out there and do it. So instead of people saying, well, you know, uh, the cops are just racist. If, if, if you really feel like that, maybe you should consider getting into law enforcement and then see how it, you know, see how it is to be in law enforcement and see how you can influence it, right? And then, and at the same time, if there's people out there who think things about you because of the way you look, so for example, in my case, like you guys are saying, well, you know, you're driving this uh, asshole car because it's a muscle car, it's all fast and everything, and then you got a big mohawk and all that. So oh, I don't. Maybe from my point of view, my job to do is to show people that hey, not everyone that drives a car like this and has a mohawk is a bad exactly. guy. Exactly. You know, so we both have to try to like talk to each other and figure things out. And I think that's how we uh, we at least start moving towards, you know, getting these things done. But I'm still like, I don't know, man, I can't 100% accept that the police officers are just out there 
running people's plates all the time. Uh, Something about this feels like, you know, yeah. Big Brother, you okay. know, well, uh, invasion of privacy that, to me. <laughs> um, it wants, uh, driving a car is not a right, it's a privilege. Yeah. So... Notice that. Right, 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 right. I mean, you know, you don't, you're not born with a car attached to your leg. So, you're and you're not... Car to find <laughs> Okay, so listen, Walter, you, the other day you were going through the airport and they, they put you through a whole bunch of checks, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, well, were, you happy, were you happy about that? No, but it was... It, okay. I could, well, you know what? So what are you saying? You well, know? The, the best thing to say is nothing and stand there and let them do it. Because okay. there was nothing there. <laughs> you can't stop them. Well, yeah, if you stop right. them, you're going to jail. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Okay. I'm not going to jail over some... Uh, 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 cookie mix that was in the bag okay so <laughs> it looked like powder so they had the, and they you know you could open soon they open the smell it oh okay well you know but okay. bob away okay so so basically matt um i mean obviously it looks like i'm alone on this thinking that <laughs> you know it's not necessarily the best thing in the world to be constantly running plates i i'm i guarantee you i'm not alone I guarantee you, I'm not alone. I person, I don't think it's a great thing. I mean, there's there's better things sometimes to be doing, but they've got the technology that that everybody Why likes. You know, when 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 the cop stops the murderer, everybody loves it. Yeah, but right? where does where does this become an abuse? Go ahead. What was that, Matt? There's, there's trade-offs, like he pointed out. Everybody loves it when we find the bad guy. The, one of the reasons we're running license plates is so we can recover stolen cars. Right. That's uh, constantly people, going. Yeah. yeah. That, you know, there's people with warrants. You run their license plate; it's got to hit on the plate for the person with the warrant. So you, we're, that's one of the reasons we're running plates when we're driving around. Another one is you know you're looking for valid registration. Traffic cops are probably more so than than uh, yeah. non-traffic cops are looking for valid registration stuff like that. When I'm running plates, I'm looking for stolen cars and I'm looking for bad guys. Okay, so do you just sit there in your car and you're like bored and I'm like, oh, I think I'm going to run this guy's plates or. You know, do you ever just think like, oh, I don't like how that guy looks. I'm going to run his plates. Oh, come or, on. You know, I mean, what I'm trying, I'm not trying to say that you would do that, Matt. I know you, you're a good guy. But, you know, I mean, can we at least admit that there might be some abuse of this? You know, this is information. Information is power. And we know that people abuse this kind of information. Is that wrong for me to say that? I don't, I don't know. I'm not sure what you're thinking that they're abusing by running a license plate. I guess that's where I'm. I'm okay. When we're running the plate, we're just finding out if the vehicle's registered or if it has any stolen, you know, any any wants on it. It's not like we're getting anything that we can use. It's not like you know, obviously, I'm not getting credit card numbers or anything like that off of it. Right. I'm not sure what abuse I would, you would be referring to. Yeah, I mean, look, even in the, I don't know. For me, there's something intrinsic that says like, you know. If I understand if you do something wrong, you're here in traffic. I know that, you know, I, I not everyone gets a license and all that kind of stuff. Not everyone can go out there and drive. You're here in traffic. If you're doing something wrong, you're creating problems. You're, you know, driving erratically. You're speeding. You ran a light or whatever. Someone runs your plate. The the idea of just people just randomly running your plates and, and you know, and then someone trying to tell me like, oh, it's, you know, it's this, it's no big deal. This, this isn't being tracked anywhere. We don't know that your plate was ran at this time and this location. None of that's going to come back to get you. And I'm just taking for granted, like what information is out there um, behind my thing. I know in my case, when I was, when I was pulled over and um, I showed my CCW and then they ran my CCW to see if it was valid. And then the guy actually ran the serial numbers off my Glock. Well, they do that to make sure it's not stolen. You can um, have a concealed yeah, weapons permit. What? You yes, can have what? a concealed weapons permit and have a hundred stolen guns. You know, it does. Yeah, but that's honestly, Walter, that's bullshit. <laughs> yeah, so, there's no firearms registration. So. Yeah, and that's bullshit. So sure. in the and, and in my case, way. and in my case, um, that got the that whole department was retrained. You know, not only with, are they not supposed to disarm you if you haven't broken the law. They are not supposed to run the serial numbers of your gun if you have a valid CCW because because you're you're now implying that I'm a criminal, you know, because I have a gun. I'm a criminal, so you're running the thing. If there's not if there's nothing criminal that went down, why are you running the serial number on my gun? You know, why are you creating records of my gun? And here in Florida, by the way, that's that is against the law, and they retrain them. So no, that wasn't right. What happened? So you're saying you were guilty until proven innocent. 
Yeah, in that case, that's what I believe, and I think I think it's like what I'm trying to what I'm trying to say. It's that, like there's this weird line that we're walking, where you know I'm in traffic, and then someone's looking at stuff. I'm like, oh, this is weird. Let me let me pull this guy over and figure out what's going on here. And every time, I mean, Matt, every am, am I wrong? Every single time you pull someone over, you're rolling the dice, right, on what's going to happen. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, so I don't think this is something that we should just go into lightly, like, oh, let's pull this guy over, pull this guy over, pull this guy. Because every time you do that, you're creating a situation where that person might be nervous, something goes on, you're nervous, they do the wrong thing, you know, and, and it goes bad. I know, I agree with everyone that it doesn't happen. It, most of the time, things don't go wrong and they don't go bad. So you think this would have been an issue if she wasn't black? No, I mean, to me, I, I'm that's not. What I'm, that's what I kind of think, too. It's like the headline is black, yeah, they black, black, right black, black. I'm that, like, yeah, yeah well, that's CNN the. CNN was proud yeah. to put that as the beginning. Yeah, right that's, right that's, away, they're trying to, like, like, say something went wrong because she was black. And it wasn't because she was black. She was pulled over. I'm sorry. I don't think so. Yeah, so, go ahead, Matt. What do you want to say? Uh, I was going to say the same thing. The uh, Every every media outlet, if you, if you Google uh, Aramis, Aramis, Ayala, vehicle stop, almost, I would say nine out of ten of the headlines are talking about how she was stopped by a black, or she was stopped for being black, mm -hmm. and uh, the cops couldn't explain why they stopped her, which is not true. Yeah, they tell it tell. Okay, so we let's ask this question. As a police officer, don't you have lots of reasons why you pull a person over? Don't you always have those ready because legally you have to have reasons to pull someone over? Yeah. Yeah. As soon as she asked, we told her exactly why. Yeah, so every single vehicle that exists today on the road could be pulled over because of tents. Because most vehicles are factory tinted, just like Walter just said about the tents on his vehicle. Right? This is just like, obviously, I mean, it's kind of like a little game that we're playing. Like, okay, I got to have a reason to pull you over. Can you pull somebody over for a tent primarily in Florida? That's what my question is. I don't know. Um, or or is it the radio I friends that's been pulled over for a tent? In California, you can't have tent on the door, the driver, the front door windows. Right. So if someone's got tent on their front door windows, I can stop you. As far as the yeah. rear windows, you know, yeah. I, mean, I have no yeah. idea. So, I mean, technically, it's a good reason. I see that there's comments. I'm going to get to the comments. Definitely let us know about the comments. Someone says running tags equals revenue more than profiling. So, and I <laughs> listen, I, here's the thing that I think. Was she driving while black? Technically, yes. If anytime I get in a car, I'm driving while black, right? So, I mean, by just by definition. So now, do, do like in my case, when I got pulled over, I didn't think that I got pulled over because I was black in that moment. And I know a lot of people gave me a hard time because in the video, I said that, um, and I said in the video that I didn't really think that, but someone told me that. This is what happened. Like, one of my friends who's actu who was actually in that department told me that I could get the video, and he told me that I was pulled over because I was black. Because in that case, there's a black family that every yeah. year had this party. They invited a lot of people. It got really crazy. The people that came there committed crimes and did all this kinds of stuff. So that that particular police action that went down in my case, you know, they were doing that for a very deliberate reason. Um, the, the officer that pulled me over was on the opposite side of the road with a young black woman outside of her car. And then they saw me because they spotted me and he he U-turned and came after me. And there were other people that were pulling over and he was like, no, I want this guy. So, That's because you got that car of yours. That's why they did that. No, I think that, the, and I'm telling you, this is from the people who live here. I wasn't aware of all this stuff. The people who live here say that, you know, that because this black family has this party, it was like, it's an issue and they, and they do these things. And I get that. The problem is, is I had no choice but to be driving down the road. But what I'm trying to say to you is any, if you're Asian, if when you're driving, you're driving while Asian. If you're white, when you're driving, you're driving while white. We, can, we cannot escape from who we are. And no, I don't think that it, that makes it automatically a reason why people do things to us. No, I don't believe that. You know, what I do think is that it's, I think it's good that she went through this, right? I think well, she, gets to, she gets to deal with everybody else has to deal with. Exactly. At, at, at times, not, you know, at times. I don't have a tag that doesn't come up weird, but. <laughs> yeah, um, I mean, I think she gets to see why people go through this and maybe ask the question. Look, if, if nothing else, maybe she gets to say like, what the hell's going on with the plates, right? Yeah, yeah. She like, why, why do these plates have a problem? 
or you know i mean she gets to see what people are feeling about and this is how we move in 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 a certain direction this whole thing went down positive i think you know what the other day my sons were pulled over they went out to the movies i think the movie started like a quarter to 11. so at 1 30 in the morning they were driving home and they told me you know they got pulled over and uh, I said, why? And, and he said, well, because I was speeding a little bit. They were talking uh, to each other. They a were, little bit. <laughs> yeah, they weren't paying attention. A little bit. A, a little bit. Yeah. So one thirty in the morning, you're on the road speeding. You get pulled over. I, I mean, yeah, yeah, it's like license and registration. Country. Yeah, Boom. I mean, this is the country. You know what I'm saying? There's not a lot of traffic on the road. And they got pulled over by that same department. I believe it was a, a female sheriff. And, and, and they told me that they, um, she asked the, uh, my older son that was driving to get out of the car. She spoke to him. She asked him, you know, what was going on. And, and she told him, you know what, pay attention, think about what you're doing, slow down. And then she let them go on their way. That's what happens most of the time. Yep. You know, most of the time these things don't go wrong. As long as you don't start mouthing off and things like that. Exactly. You know, yeah, and, right. I, and, I, and I take the time to talk to my children and tell them a lot of things in life. We all know this. A lot of things in life go wrong. It's a perfect storm. You got an attitude. This person, you know, has had a bad day. Maybe, maybe he's yeah. had a bad day, or she's right. had a bad day. Right. right, and things go wrong. And I don't think in this situation anything like that happened. These guys, when they realized they were dealing with someone in law enforcement and all that kind of stuff, they they let it go. And I think it's a good opportunity for us to talk about it. And I don't honestly think that it becomes this big, like uh, you know, racial profiling thing. <laughs> I don't think it was that we have to get into. But what I do think, uh oh, we got we got Mark here joining. What I do uh -oh. think it is, and, and I don't, you know, I mean, I don't know why I can't get over it, but I do think it's a thing about like I have a thing with with the uh, plates and all that kind of stuff just being run all the time. Uh, well, so I guess you guys are saying I'm just I'm just dead wrong. No, no, no I'm, I'm not saying that wrong. Yeah, you know, I'm on a public road. Yeah, I, I don't know. Okay. So you guys are all for Big Brother. You guys are all down to put a chip. Like when you, you know, when you walk past, if you, if you walk past a police officer, they they scan you. You know, it's a privilege to be walking. Is that you know? I'm I'm just wondering if I'm wrong about that. Go ahead. Someone, someone, take it from me here. No, I, I, that's the only reason I called in was to back you up. Okay. Uh, you know, Walter said, you know, it's not a right to drive. Well, yeah, when the Constitution was written, nobody was driving around. <laughs> they had horses. <laughs> Come on. Yeah, that's my point. Horse and carriage. It's the same thing. I mean, <laughs> if you're walks. walking down the street, you want them just pulling you over, you have, a, you have an inalienable right to walk. And in, in the modern day, you have an inalienable right to drive. It's the same thing with, like, suppressors or the same uh, thing with, with modern firearms versus, uh, you know, flintlocks. I mean, it sounds like an argument that the anti-gun guys would make. Well, you know, that was written before we had AR-15s. <laughs> well, that shit was written before we had cars, too. So I'm, I'm on your side with this, Hank, which I know is unusual because I usually just call in to bash you. Yeah, I thought that's why you were jumping on here. I was like, oh, boy, <laughs> it's about to get deep now. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just think that I agree with you. I, I think that uh, it's no different. You know, we've evolved as a species and we've evolved as a country. And, you know, I think once you've uh, paid the dues through the plate fees and the uh, the licensing fees and you've passed the test, I think you do have a right to drive. That's well, yeah, why you, we're you, you jump through the hoops. Go, go ahead, Matt. We missed what you said. Say that again. What he just mentioned there, once you've paid the fees, once you've got your license, you have the right to do that, which is exactly true. The reason we're running plates is to make sure you paid those fees. Yeah. Right. So, so what Matt is saying well, is that technically here, so you're saying Matt that because there was some discrepancy with those plates, that's like a valid reason. Oh yeah. When they ran the plates, they did not come back in the computer, which is why they stopped. Yes. So that is one. There's lots of reasons that could have been. It could have been a, a counterfeit plate. It could have been off of a lot of yard. Who knows? They ran it. As soon as they contacted her, they realized she wasn't a dirt bag. They asked her who she worked for. That she told them. And then they left. And they went on. It was way. like a two-minute stop. All right. No worries. I, 
I can't believe we're on the same side, Hank. Yeah, I, you know, my thing is, like, look, I agree. Listen, I, I said it before. I, I don't think that this is, like, a big thing. Obviously, you can see in this video this was a professional woman. I think a lot of times, you know, uh, I understand profiling. I get it, you know. Um, sometimes I'm driving down the road and I see some dudes. It happened to me today. I, I saw a dude. I was like, this guy's acting crazy. No one's here to do anything about it. I get that. But the person who's just driving along, not doing anything, you know, and for some reason, like, you know, this little thing that could come up that could maybe be a technical error, like some kind of error. It obviously is an error, right? You know, this is a government vehicle and lots of crazy stuff happen, happen with the plates and all that. But I don't, you know, if it was a, if, if you're driving a stolen car, does it come back weird like that, Matt? Does it come back with nothing? Or <laughs> it does it come back stolen? stolen? That's what it could be reported. <laughs> it comes back stolen. <laughs> If it was a stolen car with a plate that they had grabbed out of a wrecking yard, it would come back exactly. It would come back with nothing on it, just like hers came back with nothing on it. So that's why they were conf it was not a stolen car. Okay, I mean maybe that's something that we're missing here because we're not sitting in the cruisers and we can't see this info, right? Correct. Well, if I okay, so if I run if I run your license plate, it's going to come up with your name. Every agency runs their, their computer system is different. But if I run a license plate, I get the return, and it tells me who the car is registered to, what kind of car it is, uh, what their address is, when the registration expires, and, and a bunch of other things like you know, in California, when the last time it was logged, it was paid, all that stuff. Does it tell you if I have a, a, a concealed weapons permit? California does not know, but then in California only issues like ten of those a year. So. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> so that's I, a good I have, one, Matt. I have a question. Um, if I just see this as presuming guilt rather than presuming innocence, if you didn't have something to flag you to run that tag, you're presuming I'm guilty. Because if you presumed I was innocent, you wouldn't run the fucking tag. Yeah, so I mean that's that's a good question. You know, why does so does the tag get run automatically or does it get run manually, Matt? Or is it different? It could be different. There there I have no idea if their vehicle is equipped with like a license plate reader. Okay. When I was still in patrol, the last car I had we had a, a license plate reader on it and it ran everything that I drove. Okay. Wow. Uh, yeah, so the system for a series of numbers in it, like a you know the appropriate size and the appropriate number of letters and numbers in a row, and it would run it. So I had it run like low clearance signs in the drive-through. I had it run mailboxes. I had it run phone boxes. Okay. Anything that they thought was a license plate. Yeah. So I mean, and I see that folks are saying that this is just like an efficient way to do police work, right or wrong. First thing I've issued is the license plate reader system. Like the same kind of issues you guys have with us running license plates. Now hold on a second. I'm hearing like some motorcycles or something. They're hold coming on. to get us. Run! <laughs> Who's got the motorcycles rolling by? Stop from here. Oh, okay. All right. So that, we'll blame that on Steve. I'm yeah, sorry, Matt. Know, yeah, I'm my apologies, this. Matt. Do you, you mind going back over that? So well, I have similar issues that you're talking about with us running license plates. I have those issues with license plate reader system. I'm an end user of it. Um, the, the license plate reader, not only does it run all that information, but it actually tracks the uh, GPS location of the plate and when it was run and time, stamp, time and date stamps it as well. And it keeps that information for I don't know how long, probably forever. So I do have concerns that you guys are talking about as far as that. Oh, hold on a second, Matt. Hold on. Yeah, there was a bunch of noise there. I'm sorry. Go ahead. So, yeah. Talking about uh, Mark's comment about the uh, presumption of, of guilt as far as us running the license plates. I don't know how to address that. I mean, I'm not assuming anybody's guilty. Then why are you running the plate? Run license Well, you're obviously not assuming I'm innocent, and I thought that's what I was afforded. I'm not making an assumption one way or the other. <laughs> yeah, but the okay. the thing is, look, I'm not saying that, that necessarily that officer is doing it, but what happens is, it, you know, that like this is the spark to the situation, right? 
This is the spark to getting pulled over that otherwise you would just, because if, is there a solution to getting pulled over here? Is this plate now fixed? Is it magically, you know, are we going to like fix the issue that goes on with plates? No. If she was a private citizen and had a problem with her license and it came up in their computer wrong, that private citizen would go to the DMV and give it fixed. License plate for a government issued vehicle. So she's going to have to figure out whether she wants to have that plate show up with some sort of information and have her department fix it for her. Yeah. So that's entirely on her whether she has the information. And if she's smart, she keeps it off the off the records. Yeah, but here's the thing. Here's the thing I think that happens, and I and I think this is why it's concerning to people, because you know your plate's getting run. You're somehow in the system. The system doesn't work perfectly. And a whole bunch of things can can go wrong along the way. Now, if you get pulled over, the the catalyst to you getting pulled over, a little thing like that could be the reason why you wound up dead, right? Or even in the case, you know, if if we think if we flip it on the other side, you know, um, it could be the reason why something bad happens to that police officer that's pulling someone over. You know, now there's no, for whatever happens to you that you get pulled over, in my personal opinion, you get pulled over, you might not be happy about it. Okay, you have to deal with it. But once you start going down this road, if something goes wrong, isn't that what, you know, kind of what happened with uh, Philando Castile? He got pulled over for some reason. You know, the officer thought that th he was driving a car that fits a description that did something. Okay, now he got pulled over. Once we're, once we're going down this road now, things start to go wrong and and something happened and he wound up dead and that's irreversible so in the point the point of the is that it was a whole lot different there was a whole lot of stuff that went wrong there and it wasn't just a vehicle stop for his life for, for reaction to burn out tail light like, whichever it was mm -hmm. but he was a armed robbery suspect when they stopped him so that's why the officer had such a heightened awareness awareness or he was freaked out when he pulled the guy over mm -hmm. there was lots of problems there on that stop. So th this stop is is the the opposite end of the spectrum from from right. Orlando. Yeah, but but I mean I think what I'm saying is like if, if you know once you get into these situations you create this thing and if there's just a bunch of reasons and if these things are automatically doing it and you're paying attention to it and it pops up like oh something's weird here, you know I get it I understand that um, that there's things that go that things that go wrong and why records may not show this thing or that thing. But when we're talking about human life, shouldn't we somehow try to slow these things down? I mean, you know, let's say privacy is not that big of a deal, but if it's going to wind up, if it's going to wind up costing a human life, shouldn't we somehow slow it down and think about it and why it's happening? I, I think you might be blowing this a little out of proportion personally. Mm -hmm. I don't see this stop is textbook. They contacted her, they were polite, she gave them the information, they told her why they stopped her, and they were on their way. Mm -hmm. To get where you're at, it's a, it's a huge leap to go from what happened to what you're suggesting could happen. Okay. I mean, I, I think the, the reason I got on here not wasn't to talk about all the underlying issues with DMV right. and everything. Mm -hmm. My issue was with the way the, the media is treating right. us. That's why yeah. I, I... Correct. I mean, Blow this way out of proportion to making it all about race. Okay. And it's not. Sorry? Yeah. Well, I, I mean, I don't it's think not. I would. I don't think I would argue with that with you. The media always does it, but that doesn't mean that there's not some kind of issue there that maybe we have to examine it. I, I you know, I agree. The media is looking for any reason to create these issues, and we don't necessarily need them created. This doesn't. This is not like. I think. You know, maybe this is just news because it's kind of ironic, right? Kind of an ironic thing. She's a state attorney. You know, she gets pulled over. I think it's pretty good because it doesn't put her above it. Yeah, she's a state she needs to be pulled over. If there's an issue, pull her over. What mm -hmm. is the what is the deal? What if she was driving her own personal car, and then they pull her over and they, oh, they stopped her because she was black? Well, maybe not. I mean, I don't, I don't know. And then she flashes her badge, and then next thing you know, she, you know, but I, I don't, I don't see it. I don't know. All right. Okay. I mean, I just think the thing I think about it is that, you know, uh, I just think that it's just a thing. It's she wasn't doing something. If you said she was driving her own personal she, car or even she was driving this car and she ran a red light, she, she wasn't ran a doing anything. Sign, you know, she, was, she wasn't doing anything. The tag yeah. did it. You know, I mean, it's over. We're going right back. We started. 
plate chose right. issue. The plate did it. <laughs> she did um, nothing. Yeah, but so there's nothing. To, yeah, but you see, there. these are th there's. I don't know. I just think Hank, there's you can lots keep of going reasons. on if and if, if and if and if and if. I right. mean, I can walk out and let's, let me tell you what happened the other morning. I go to walk out of my house, and I and I go to a lot of times. I have guns, and I'm walking out to the car with them in the morning. There's two sheriffs across the street. Whoa. Well, but I ain't walking outside with a gun in my hand. <laughs> I'm not, mm -hmm. I, you know, I understand their, their position, you know, so I just waited and, you know, and did my thing when they weren't there. And I wasn't doing anything wrong. I just didn't want to look like I was do <laughs> walking toward them with an AR-15, you know. It's not a good idea nowadays, so. Yeah. Uh, so I just waited. Okay. Um, listen, my thing is, I think that there's lots of reasons to pull people over and you can keep, you know, yes, we can keep going through it because obviously there's reasons for you to get pulled over. So basically the thing that we should all accept is that we are living in a police state. And if someone has a badge, it can pull you over all the time. It, but you, it, but, it, deal but with that. yes and no, but it doesn't happen all the time. That's what I'm, that's, that's what kind of what I'm kind of like, it's like, it's like, I'm not yeah, going down, the, people, I'm not going down the street people, now and there's not a roadblock out there. Yeah, but some people have the, so it's not valid to discuss the fact that some people feel that it does happen all the time to them because you feel it doesn't happen all the time to you? It, well, it doesn't happen all the time to them. Them who? That's what I mean. That's what I'm, how many well, we, thousands we, of people, we, we know, we thousands know and it, thousands of people get pulled over every day in yeah. this country and, and thousands and thousands of people go about their business. Yeah, see, this is exactly the same thing that last time I was on the bridge we tried to cross, is that I think the officers do an amazing job. Is our system perfect? Of course not. But considering that they have millions of encounters every single, every day, single day and such very little goes Athens. wrong. Yeah, now I'm not saying, obviously, uh, you know, Castillo had been pulled over 40 times in his life. That's bullshit. Oh, really? There's wow. a, yeah, oh yeah, there's a problem <laughs> there, right? So obviously some of us have a different perspective. I've not been pulled over 40 times in my entire life, and I probably should have been pulled over 400, <laughs> right? So, <laughs> but I mean, I think they do an amazing job, and I think that's what it is. I think, you know, the old saying of making a mountain out of a molehill applies a little bit here, unless, of course, the mountain is being dropped on you, then it is a mountain. You know, if it's on someone else, it's a molehill. I think we kind of have a, a little bit of a middle ground. You know, I think Walter's right. Who is this? Who all is it happening to all the time? Yeah. Well, that and that is a matter of perspective because it depends on who you talk to. I mean, I've been I, I could tell you lots of horror stories uh, that I personally have with police officers. I've been set up. I've had police officers plant uh, crack cocaine on me when I was a kid. And I spent a couple of days in prison for that, like locked up. And then they try to get me to cop a plea. And they're like, yeah, you're only going to spend like six months in prison, which at the time, New York has like mandatory, uh, had, I think, well, they just got rid of it. They had mandatory 20 years for one, you know, rock cocaine. And I refused to do that. And uh, I had lawyers and everything there. And my parents were there, but they wouldn't let me talk to them. And they were just trying to get me to like, you know, cop a plea to something and confess just because they were just trying to get the numbers. You know, they were trying to get all these convictions and things like that. And I wound up in front of the judge. The judge cursed them out. They got me out of the of the courtroom and everything. I went home. I didn't even know my parents were there. So it's all perspective on who you are. So it's easy to say, like, you know, depending on what perspective that you look at the world from, that, yeah, this is no big deal. On my, on my part, I think that we have to admit, like, I, I, would, I would agree with you. I agreed with all you guys that most police officers are good guys. I know a lot of police officers, right? I have. Uh, friends, family, all that kind of stuff that serve in law enforcement. But there's still power that can be abused here, and that's what I, that's the, you know, the question. And yes, in this case, it was no big deal. You know, it, it, we've moved on from it, but it happens to other people, and it is a big deal. Well, but I think the problem is, is that it's a, it can lead to the first step. I mean, I'm going to go a little bit off the deep end here. But, you know, this is this automatic reading of license plates is the first step of a long journey towards DNA testing infants in the womb and determining whether or not they're going to be criminals, a minority report situation, that kind of thing. Now, yes, I'm way off the deep end, and that's years and years and years down the road, but I think it starts with the very first small step of this auto scanning of license plates and scanning millions and millions and millions of innocent, law-abiding, uh, 
um, motorists so that we can find one that may or may not be doing something. Yeah, who, who else has a, who has a comment to that? <laughs> no one. <laughs> Silence. <That's a> sign. <laughs> Next. <laughs> Silence. Okay, you guys want to move on to, okay, what do you, what would you, I know you don't have a lot of time, Matt, <laughs> since no one else wants to, what do you want to, what else would you like to talk about? I'm actually out of time, so. Okay, well, there you go. <laughs> hey, Matt, thank you very much, man. I appreciate yeah. you coming on, even though we differ. Uh, and I appreciate the job that you and, and the guys do every day. Thank you. Yeah, because yeah. it's a job I couldn't do, so. Oh, me either. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, Matt. I don't want to, you know, I don't want anything to happen to you. You're my friend, you know, um, and, and I care about you, so I don't want anything to happen to you. I just think that we should have some of these discussions. That's why I appreciate you coming on and talking about it, right? Yeah. Much. I appreciate uh, giving me the opportunity to at least. Yeah. And if you and if you have something, if you have something, man, that you really want to get off your chest and you want to talk about, you should let me know so we can start it up and talk about it. You know. All right. All right, man. Thanks. Yep. Have a good one. See you. You too. Yeah. You know. Um, so what was that comment that Lola has here? Can we get something done to indicate CCW holders when driver's license is scanned? I don't know. I don't know. In 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 light of what we're talking about, that's probably not a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, look, yeah. you know, the last time I got stopped, matter of fact, we were going to his place, right? We were going up to see Hank, right? I mean, we had a bunch of the morning, yeah, we're morning we're yeah. going to see you and I got the superb and jam pack full of guns. <laughs> I mean ammo and guns and everything else, and I'm like, you know, woo! I was speeding. Pulls me over, license registration right off the bat. Because, you know, that's the best thing to do. Keep your hands on the steering wheel. Mm -hmm. How you doing? Mm -hmm. You know what you were doing? Yeah, I was probably going a little fast. Yeah, you were. Da-da-da. Checks it out. You know, you need to slow down. Writes me a warning. Um, I tell Spencer to keep keep his mouth shut. <laughs> because one time, <laughs> one time we, got, we got stopped right outside. What about all the guns? Well, <laughs> yeah, it would say something what, like what, that. What, like, one night we were leaving the shop. We left the shop one night. And as we pull out, the sheriff stops us because he's just looking for stuff at, at night. No reason besides we were just out at night. And um, and this was right after another policeman or, or sheriff had been shot. Okay. And as the, as the cop's walking down the side of the car, Spencer rolls the back window down and goes, is there a problem, officer? <laughs> That's what my son said to the sheriff. Oh, yeah. and, uh, and he goes, roll that yeah. window back up, son. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Spencer's going to say whatever the hell he oh, wants yeah, to say. Mine, yeah. Yeah. yeah, good luck with trying to stop him. <laughs> <laughs> so at this time I said, Spencer, keep your mouth shut. <laughs> and don't say yeah. anything. You know? And, and he, we weren't doing anything wrong besides the speed. And we were just going, but, you know, if, if one thing led to another, it'd be an international incident with all the firearms and everything. So even though there's not a problem, but I don't want that. So. It, I'm not going to tell him. Yeah. I think it's, a, I think, you know what, even if, it's it's always a mutual respect situation, you know. Just the the thing for me is I, you know, I don't know if this would always be like the safest thing to do to to let people know that you have that you, you know that you're concealed carrying. I've been pulled over before and it never became a question or anything well, like if that. It, if it's not, if I, they so, don't ask if they don't ask me, I'm not saying anything. Yeah. It's, yeah, me too. Uh, you yeah, know, if you ask me if I have a fire, I'm going to say, yeah, I got a whole car load of them. Want to see them? <laughs> right. I think it depends on the situation. If, if someone's going to the level of making you um, get out of the car. Like, I know I was pulled over in the car in, in Georgia. Now, anyone who lives in Florida know anytime, anytime you're leaving and you go through Georgia, either you're going through Georgia or coming back. Yeah, you're not Florida. stopping, right? Yeah, there's, um, they have, uh, so I don't know what you call those actions that they do out there, but they have these tag team things. There's a lot of uh, highway patrol. They tag team you. They have two different cars driving past you, doing all kinds of crazy stuff. And, and I was in that situation, and, um, and I got pulled over, and then the guy walks up, and I guess when he saw my plates closely, he realized that it was a Florida plate, and, and he told me, oh, I was pulling you over for your window tint, but you have a Florida plate, so I can't really do anything about it. You know, and he went about his business. If there's, if the, like, if in that situation, that person now knows that, hey, this person could potentially have a gun. Does that, uh, always, well, is that always good? It's not good. So I we didn't get, we didn't, we didn't get into that. You, you might know? not have any gun, but it puts the other guy on this alert thing where he's ready to pull his gun, you know, or something, you know. I don't. Yeah, you know. yeah. I don't think it a hundred percent should happen. I think it should be left up to you. And if you realize that you're in a situation where you're going to get pat down, something, you know, this is just became more serious. You don't want to lie. Yeah. 
Yeah. yeah, because you don't want to you don't want to shock that guy when he comes across. When he finds you out you really know. do have guns. He's going to really be pissed off. Yeah. Right. You know, <laughs> so, and and, just, and if you're in a situation, if he's asking you if you're armed, sure, you know, you let yeah. them know that you're armed. I think in my situation, when they wanted to, I let them know I was armed, and then they wanted to disarm me. I didn't feel comfortable being disarmed because it was like initially it was about five of those guys. You know, and you could see them because in the beginning, most of them left, but there was still like two or three guys there while it was going on. They have on body armor and all that kind of stuff, and they want to disarm me, <laughs> you know. And so now I'm like, you know, left not armed and all that kind of stuff. I didn't try to hold on to my rights and go, hey, screw you. You can't disarm me. And yeah, all you're going to go to jail then. You're going to yeah. go to jail. Yeah, well, I let them disarm me. And, and eventually, like the way that – it all went down is they all got retrained and they were told, listen, right, so it all worked out in the end, right? Yeah. If someone's not breaking the law and they don't feel comfortable being disarmed. So I guess they can still ask you if, you know, if you would disarm, but if you say you don't feel comfortable being disarmed, then they don't really have any legal standing to disarm you. I don't, you I don't know. Did it, legal. did it all work out in the end? I mean, everyone went home safe and obviously that's what we're trying to accomplish and they got retrained. But what about your freedom? What about the anxiety and the fear you had on the side of the road being disarmed? What about your time? I'm not sure that it all, I wouldn't say that it all worked out. I think it all came to a conclusion we can live with because everyone lived. But to say it all worked out is, is kind yeah. of giving those guys a pass, in my opinion. Well, it's a whole lot of what about this and what about that. Yeah. I mean, I guess we all got to move on with our lives. I'm pretty right, sure right. that that I'm pretty sure that police officer does not really want to deal with me again. Um, I I don't, you know, you're right. I do, you know, whenever I see those guys behind me, I always feel uncomfortable because I think, yeah, you know, what if these guys were not happy about being retrained? There's a lot of stuff that happens, and I think ultimately here, the way, you know, even though we support police officers, absolutely, that's what we do. We support them. They're doing a job that, for the most part, we want them to do. I think we have – listen, it's undeniable that in America we have a situation here where we're moving in the direction of a police state. Some places are worse than others, you know, but we're moving to, towards a police state, I think. And I think that there's people who, you know, not all of the guys, but there's a percentage of people that get into that that shouldn't be in it or in it for the wrong reasons and, and uh, you know, things go wrong. And that's what's creating all the anxiety that we have. And the ironic thing about it is these are people that, that, that are getting paid with our tax money and that we're hiring to do a job. And, you know, technically they can legally kill their bosses. We're their bosses, they can legally kill us. And for the most part, even if they did something wrong, they're indemnified from it. And that's why we're scared. And there's a reason why some people are more scared than other people. You know, and it's easy to do that, even if you don't understand it. Like, um, you know, I've been I've been driving on. The, I remember one time I was driving on the highway with a friend of mine who's white and I'm driving the car. And he's like, you know, we were going somewhere and he's like, you know, you just need to drive faster. And I was like, dude, um, I'm driving the speed limit. And he was like, screw that just tr drive faster. And I was like, what, you, what if we get pulled over? And he was like, fuck them. <laughs> you won't get pulled over. You got your white friend with you. Yeah. And I said, you know what? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Oh, and I was like, listen, man, I don't think so. I yeah, am that's, not creating. That's, <laughs> that's kind of like, you know, you don't have to outrun the bear. You just have to outrun Hank. <laughs> you outrun your friend. Yeah. yeah. You, you, don't have to out, you don't have to out white him. You just got to be a little more white. <laughs> yeah, you know what would happen though? The reality is when I do get pulled over, that guy's probably gonna shut the hell up and not be talking all badass. <laughs> okay. While I'm getting chewed out and I'm getting a ticket and my insurance and everything's going up. You know, so it's where it's a weird thing. Did did you guys see what happened with uh Shia LeBeau? Oh <laughs> he's oh, a now. <laughs> did you see what happened with Shia? Shia LeBeau? I think that's how you say it, right? Is it LeBeau or LeBuff? Oh, LeBeau. LeBeau. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah. so, I mean, so he got, he was, I guess, in a hotel lobby or something, and he asked for a, someone for a cigarette, but he was obviously drunk. And then, so this police officer arrested him, and it was a black police officer. So he started cursing the guy out, and he was like, I can't believe he arrested me when you live in a country where the president hates you. He's talking to the black guy, the police officer. And he's like, you know, and, uh, 
you know, there's all these white people who don't like you, and I'm one of the good white guys. <laughs> and you're, <laughs> you're locking me up, you bastard. Not right now, you know. Right now. <laughs> so, I mean, th 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 this is a thing that is something for people, right? And, you know, and he's one of those liberal people who believes, you know, we're, we're not down with, these, with, with, with his philosophy, right? We don't believe what he believes. But here he is, you know, this is a situation where he is like, you know, what's up, black man? I'm one of the good white people. Why are you arresting me? <laughs> I'm one of good drunk white people, right? You get a little picture into what he really is when he's drunk. Yeah, yeah, he's a, he's a, there's no signal. He's not trying to virtue signal. He's really yeah. what he is. Yeah. 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 So listen, uh, you know, okay. I think, you know, I think we covered it. Yeah, we did. I think we got it. I think, I think people got that out of their system there. If you haven't, you know, definitely. Um, you know, let us know <laughs> if you didn't get it out of your system. We'll talk about it. You know what else I did want to talk about? And I think this is a good thing. HK. Just, let's go back to guns. HK. So, what did HK do now? I got to hear about this. Um, All right. That, that's my cue to exit stage right because they already hate me. So oh. I don't need to on this anymore. <laughs> you know about HK. You can talk about HK a little bit. Yeah. So HK is hundreds of millions of dollars in debt. So uh, German gunmaker uh, Heckler & Koch, I'm in, I see I'm pronouncing it properly, announced it had reduced its financial debt to a mere 170 million euros, which is about 194 million <laughs> That's US. All. Just a little bit. You know, yeah, just a little bit. Thanks yeah. to an equity increase of 50 million euros via capital shares increase. With this, the company will issue approximately 6.6 .6 million new shares. So basically, they're like, just printing money. <laughs> Print more money. It's useless. Yeah. It's useless. Yeah. yeah. Backed up by a capital injection of 50 million euros and assistance in refinancing its 9.5% senior secured notes. So it's just going, you know, I mean, HK, this has been going on for a long time, right? This is not the only company out there like this. No, HK's, HK's been in, prob in, in, in trouble for a long time, actually. So, but who yeah. gave him the money? Who infused the money? Someone, there's some kind of, someone's making capital investments. I mean, I don't know. This is a weird is it thing. Coming from, is it coming from Argentina? Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> or Paraguay? <laughs> um, yeah, it says here, um, doo -doo -doo -doo. Um, it says they're in, um, the German firm is in dire trouble. However, they have recently gained significant contracts that will help offset this burden. Chief among those is the French AIF contract, estimated to be worth over 300 million euros. So I guess, you know, like I'm always saying that these um, government contracts can't solve all your problems, but HK is, I think they're back to that. Yeah, they probably have a huge, um, um, uh, their, their employee f employees probably uh, between the health care and the pensions and the oh, like a benefits package, the benefits and all that stuff, yeah. probably they suck them dry. I mean, in Germany, you can't just fire somebody either, or you can't just lay them off. They have to be eased out with money and and all mm -hmm. that. So it's it's not an easy process for those guys. The French are the same way. When when well, the French when the French maybe, work, that is yeah yeah. Well, maybe if they gave a shit about the end users and not just the government contracts. They wouldn't be in this position. You know, we've heard them say time and time again, ah, oh, we don't care about the end user. And there are a lot of us that would buy a lot of HK guns. And they're not cheap. If they pay a little more attention to detail and, and have a civilian division that they gave a shit about. Well, but the military contract builds the civilian market. Yeah. Because you well, see the military using their guns. Really? Yeah. How's Caltech doing? Well, Caltech doesn't have a. <laughs> yeah, they don't, don't have, have any military contracts. That's what I mean. That's, but that doesn't yeah, mean HK point. has all the contracts, yeah. so they get all the attention. Yeah. But that doesn't mean that Caltech isn't trying to get. All these companies try to get military contracts. It's no, a hard well, thing yeah, to do. It's not they just... don't have them, and they yet they can develop all of these. And I'm not, you know, a Caltech sure. fanboy by anything, but I, I think that's a cop out. Well, listen, first of all, if you're talking about the civilian market for HK, right, and they're a German company, who they, who they build, there's not, are civilians in Germany able to buy their guns? Their civilian market is us here in America. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Right, right, right. They'd never give a shit about here. Yeah, but the, and that's the problem. It's us. You know, they don't, they don't, they probably have a philosophy that they don't want the civilian market here to really be, uh, you know, to really well, be armed. You know, I know they've tried to make civilian stuff here for us in America, but... 
it obviously hasn't brought them the fortunes that they were all saying that it's going to bring them, right? They came out with the VP9 and a bunch and a few other guns, and we're not all over that here in America. But it's not, the, not it's, it's not the stuff that people want from HK. Right. People want their assault rifles. Cool That's what they want. Yeah. They, want their, they want their military type guns. They don't want these cute little polymer pistols. You can, you know, they're cute and all that, but. I don't want that. Yeah. But, but you're, talking, you're talking about a company that in their philosophy, they don't want us to have that. Well, in Germany, you know? they can't yeah. in a lot of places. So. Right. So that's the problem. I mean, does HK have factories here in America? Do they ever build a factory here? They're building one now. Yeah. But that's, but that's, a, that's not going to be for – they're thinking military, I guarantee you. Yeah, oh, yeah. I'm sure. Yeah, yeah, I see that there's comments that folks are saying that there's lots of gun channels that are big HK fans. Oh, you know, yeah. listen, they, they they have some cool guns. Yeah, that's without that's a without doubt. Without a doubt. Without a doubt. I like the I like yeah, HK. That, like I said that. the other night, my first like assault rifle was an HK ninety one. And I lusted for that thing for years before I got enough shekels together to buy one. <laughs> you know, and but it was that rarity of it that made it so special when you No, I you know, one thing I used used to see the HK ninety one or the G three Arana Walk Iran Iraq War. Every night on the news, they were shooting each other with your G3s um, all over the world. Africa, Soldier of Fortune magazine, you know, G3s. Da, da, da. So I said, I got to have a G3 or I got to have an HK. And I did eventually. And So you're um, just like, so basically, Walter, you're just like those kids who see, um, you know, they, they see a rap video. <laughs> No, it, right? and they see the, they the see Iran Iraq War wasn't a rap video, my friend. <laughs> they see an AK. What's that AK? The the AK pistol that all these kids want now? It's it's slipping my mind. The um, GP70 is a cool pistol. No, there's an AK pistol. Man, I forgot what it is. But there's a rap video about it. So all these kids are coming into the store and they want that AK yeah. pistol. So you're like that, Walter. Negative. Except you were watching the news. You were watching. I, the I don't news. think I don't think there's any rappers in Soldier of Fortune. So <laughs> in your in your time it was the news. In your time people watched Tom Brokaw or whatever or whoever. Well, whatever. Yeah, I mean yeah. that's that's when they had news on at, in the evening. You know, they showed yeah. you the Oh, Draco. Yeah, someone someone uh oh, someone said Draco. Draco. So the Draco now you can't even get Dracos in the store because these kids are just going into gun stores. Why because of in a video? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I think there's a rapper named Draco or something like they're that. Making, they're making yeah, Century Arms just start making them here, so yeah, they can they can know. they can draw it's a Draco, it's not Draco anyways. It's a Draco. Oh, excuse you know? me. Draco. It's Romanian. Excuse, Come on. It's, excuse me, Walter. <laughs> That's dragon. Draco, the man, what's up? You're just as bad as those guys that get mad at me for saying Heckler and Koch. <laughs> what I don't care how you HK takes care of that right away. So. <laughs> Whatever. It doesn't matter to me. I don't yeah, get it. It don't matter to me anyways. Yeah. But uh, they make cool stuff, but they don't care about you and me. Yeah, that's my problem well, that's with them. Fine. They can stay 170 million in debt. Yeah, yeah right. The hell with them. You know? I guarantee you, if they let, if they put me and Hank and Walter in charge of their civilian division, we'd make 170 million next year. I guarantee. Oh hell yeah! You. I, I, That's I'd my sell. point. Forget the military shit. That's ridiculous. well, we we'll, yeah, we would oh, make I, the guns I, that the I, people want. Colts the same way. You know, Colt said, <laughs> yeah. Colt said this to everybody for the longest time. We'll have our expensive guns. If you like it, too bad. If you don't, you don't. And look at Colt. Colt's the same way now. Yeah. You know, the popular pistols like the Python, they stopped making the Pythons. They stopped making yeah. the stuff people wanted, and now they're, they're, they're belly up too. So yep. I don't yeah. feel sorry for them. Let, them. let them go. Yeah, but the beauty of the free market, there'll be some other company making cool-ass guns. Yeah, but it have. doesn't have the, you know. But it doesn't have the, the horsey on it, the, the pony. <laughs> yes, I know. Listen, true, I know, I know guys. I know guys that have HK tattooed on them. So yeah, I get well, it. there's you know, there's guys that have a Colt tattooed on them too. True. Um, true. And and the, and the swastika right there too. You know, so <laughs> <laughs> it's like <laughs> I'm weird. I do like the VP9. I'm weird. Uh, yeah, I like I, I like HK stuff. Like I said, is the, the German design stuff is awesome, but you know, I just don't like their attitude. No. Yeah, I don't. Yeah. I don't think. Listen, a Glock is fine by me. Yeah, there's, a, there's an actually attitude with that too, but they understand Mark. You know, it's the free market, so. Yeah, um, but you know, it's not the fact that it's. Uh, I don't. I honestly don't care. Listen, I've had people come down on me because of Glocks. I remember I went somewhere and this guy was like, "Oh, you carry Glocks? That's for poor people." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's just like it's just like a lot of people come that you know people come down like we were talking about we people come down on high points and all that and, and high points are pretty terrible 
No, they're yeah. not. <laughs> hey, I was trying to figure out how today, how today, how I'm going to put a suppressor on one. I got it figured yeah. out there. But you know, I mean, I I don't care. What, what I care about with companies, I don't want to support companies that hate me. That's what I know. Yeah. You know, so if you if you don't think anything of me, if you hate me, if you don't think you have to make guns for me because I'm a civilian, you and know, then you want to you, know, you want to sell them to the military and take the military's money. That's that's just no. Yeah, and the, and then yeah, which happens to be my money as well, you right, jackasses. Right, 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 right. Yeah, yeah, that's true. You know, that's another thing. Companies that that um that just blatantly care about the civil about the military contracts and all that. I don't know. That's not saying a lot to me. That doesn't mean you're going to make a great gun. That doesn't mean you're going to, you know, change the game and move guns forward. Like, I'm I'm surprised. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with the SIG P320, right? You know, I used to own a, a P250. I think the 320 is a lot better. But there's people, and I think they do it because of this. Because there's military contracts now for those SIGs, people are like, oh, I got to have that gun. I got to have a one. You know, it's yeah. like, wasn't that kind of a fast process, though? That whole selection yeah, but, process? Yeah. I thought yeah, it was how, kind of. How, do you have it? But how do how do military contracts happen, man? I could tell you. I've been to Sofic. I remember, I remember when they Sofic. picked the Beretta. That went on for years before they picked yes. the Beretta, yeah. and all of a sudden now, boom, we're going sick. Yeah, it's like, sick, sick. I can tell you, sick came with the right amount of cash and the right pocket and a the right amount of hookers. <laughs> a lot, yeah, a lot faster than Beretta did. Yeah, <laughs> the, you know they had the hookers on the yachts and stuff like that. <laughs> you know, I mean. Well, Sig has external safeties too. Yeah. Well, if you look at if you look at the Glock, so, so did you guys see that the Glock Glock was trying to um, submit guns and their guns had uh, obviously had safeties on them. Yep. You know, and so um, I don't know if this is going to happen, but if Glock wants to put those guns out, I mean, why? Yeah. You know. You know, I'm not really interested in that, especially it's got a safety on it. What the hell do I want that for? Yeah, I don't want any more <laughs> junk on this to make you not be able to fire the gun when you need to. Yeah, well, there's plenty of guns out there that have safeties on them. So, I mean, there's lots of some, choices. Some of too many, in my opinion. Yeah. But, yeah. You know, so, well, so we don't, so basically we don't care about HK, right? Is that what it yeah. is? You know. We, w we would all like to take over HK. Can we get like to, a, if we I could think, get together think, and buy out HK, would you guys do it? I don't think I th it's worth it. I think it. Kalishnikov should pick them up. That's what should happen. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. How is that going to make it any better? <laughs> What, what, so what do you think that's going to be? Hey, wait a minute. What about what do you remember at the shot show? The girls at the the Kalishnikov booth. Yeah, How's okay. That? Kalishnikov has does have cute girls in their booth. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So there you go. That's all you need. That's all you. Okay, that's all you need. <laughs> You're happy. <laughs> I want an MP7. MP7. Yeah. Which and one is five, that? And a nine and an eleven. I'm just making up all the MP. Yeah, for them oh, okay. to yeah, okay. like improve it. Yeah, make it better. Oh, right, right, right. Correct. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Give give the people what they want. You know. But if 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 uh, Kalishnikov takes over, what name do they go with? <laughs> Kalish. HK. 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 Kalishnikov. HK. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Enough of that. So. Okay. So what else? What else have you guys seen in the news? Let's talk about some. You know. Have you seen uh, any news. funny stuff in the news? Funny stuff. What should we talk about? Have you heard about Black China? Should we talk about Black China? Uh, or you guys don't want any more racial? I know, she, I know who she is. <laughs> you know who Black China is? Yeah, she got a booty. You know. <laughs> well, well, well. Now Walter knows everybody with a booty. Yeah. You know what? You know what, Walter? I think. I thought it was just your dad, but I think you've got. You know. I tell you before, I'm not the Ke the Kellers like big booties apparently. <laughs> and, um, oh, okay. Will right now is not going with that. He's, he's a. You're not a big booty guy, Will. Is that he's abstaining from that. No, I mean, there's big booties that are good looking, and then right, then there's big booties at the back porch. Yeah, we don't okay. do back porches, you know. Okay, but um, <laughs> but you but you're saying fit the female. But too. you're so you like Black China's booty. That's what you're saying, or you don't? Uh, not no, not really. I don't. Because I think she, I think her, be like, oh, man. that's overdone. Yeah, yeah. that's what yeah. I mean. I know who she is. Let's go back to that. Okay. Yeah, you know who she is because she has a big booty. Okay, I get it. All right, whatever. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Words I, in my mouth. Okay, and you know what? You know what else? I don't, I know you're not into hip hop, but you know, Fresh Kid Ice. From two life crew. Oh, somebody died. Away. Yeah, somebody died. I saw that. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah. That is the um, the Asian brother 
on Two Live Crew. I was a fan. I don't know if you guys like Two Live Crew, but I like them. Yeah, I'm not from. I'm enough. I'm familiar with the name, but I don't know a lot of their stuff. So they did a lot of the raunchy stuff. Remember in like oh back uh, in the day. Yeah, this was I think like nineties. Okay, when it was well, late eighties. <laughs> they're yeah, raunchy. Late 80s. Wouldn't be raunchy anymore. Oh, it still would be pretty. Oh raunchy. no, it, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it was raunchy. They got arrested. As a matter of fact, uh, I think okay. it was. I think it was Fresh Kid Ice that went that got arrested. Oh, okay. All right. You know, because they like their stuff was so raunchy that they made laws. They passed laws in Congress and made their stuff illegal. Oh, okay. You know, that's, which, that's, that's kind of like putting the warning labels on the albums back in the eighties, and that just made the kids buy more. Yep. That's exactly yeah. what happened here. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. That was um because I think they came out. I could be wrong about this, but I think they came out before. Um, they came out before NWA, right? Yes, they were 86, 87 when they released yeah, so. their, their yeah. most popular one. Yeah, and they actually, they went viral, man, because I remember, and they went viral when it was like cassette tapes. Yes. You know, like it was, yep. it, you know, in those days, I mean, these things had to physically get around. And I remember they went, cause, because well, they're from Miami. And they went viral and with no help from radio because you couldn't pay, play any of their music yeah on the air so yep. they went underground viral i mean you had white kids in podunk iowa <laughs> all the way to manhattan to miami beach to i mean it was amazing what these guys did yeah it was i mean like because you had to literally like how i first heard him as a friend of mine went down to like either he was in miami or someplace like that and he came back with the tape and then was bootlegging it <laughs> Oh wow! For everyone, yeah, and it was it was the most amazing thing. And the more that people said, "Yeah, you shouldn't be listening to this." <laughs> okay, who's got an airstrike going on? Yeah, so what's who, going on? Yeah, Not I don't know. Having an airstrike. Yeah, what, what's going on, Steve? <laughs> I don't know. Are you? Should we? Should we be Tommy. concerned? Should, should we like? Should we pack up the guns right now in the truck? Should we all throw our HKs in the truck and come over? <laughs> yeah. I want to bring the HKs. Because <laughs> we're all horrible and we all have HKs. No, I think the only one that has one is Walter. No, I don't have true. an HK. I got a yeah. sent me HK. Yeah. Actually, hybrid Mark thing. has HKs. Wait a minute. <laughs> well, yeah, they, they better be for sale by now. <laughs> <laughs> yes. If anyone wants to buy a VP9, <laughs> we're selling Mark's VP9. So anyone who wants a VP9 that I put in a video, hit up me or Lola Strange because we are selling a VP9. <laughs> That's so terrible. <laughs> Someone says, uh, I don't know who said this, Lola. They said, I like the big booty on my Scar 17. <laughs> oh, the boot. That's the boot. Yeah. Big old. The big booty. I like that. I'm down with that. Yeah, I think you guys have, uh, well, I know there's at least two Scar 17s here, right? Because you have one, Mark. I have a 16 and a 17. Yeah. yeah. Wow. So you guys like the Scar 17? I, I've never, I've shot them, but I've never had owned one. Yeah, I mean, I, I, it's it's very simple. Yeah, they're simple and they work. And they work, right? I don't know yeah, why. Consistently. And they're lightweight comparatively. Yeah, the yeah. scar was another thing. It took years for a FN to develop the scar, right, and for the military to look at it and accept it. And then what happened? Nothing. <laughs> the the sixteen wasn't powerful enough. The seventeen, only the special ops guys got them. Yeah, and then now, too much. And now, right now, we're right back. Well, let's look at another 30 caliber rifle. It's like, what happened to the scar? Yeah, but <laughs> but there's a lot of scars out in the civilian world, right? I mean, that's who's buying. Uh, it's I'm a, pretty sure. That's my HK now. Okay. Yeah, mine too. Exactly right. I mean, I tried all of them. Every AR-10 style, 308, 30 caliber. And in my opinion, there's not one that's even close to the scar 17. I mean, not not even in the same ballpark in my opinion and i've shot 95 percent of them out there but, and i'm talking about not just one or two rounds hundreds of rounds through all of them and nothing compares okay and it's and, it, and it's and it solved all those ar problems yeah you sub know. moa from a factory i mean just it's just incredible. yeah but so is this is the scar is the scar perfect i mean i think it has issues i hate the stock in the back myself Okay. I don't like this. I mean, it's got a reciprocating uh, charging handle, right? I think yeah. that's probably a kit. Is there a kit that you can change that or no? What what what's the problem with that? Um, that you could break the crap out of your thumb. <laughs> have you? Yeah. Have you never? Uh, here's, the the thumb up there. here's the problem with it. People don't train with it. Loser. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you. Okay. Thanks Hello. A lot. <laughs> AK reciprocates too. What's the problem with that? Yeah. 
Yep. <laughs> if you need true. if you need to close that bolt or open it, it's there. On a different side of the gun, I don't have any kind. Of, no, listen, no, I've never swap them back. You can and swap forth. it. Yeah, on the sixteen seventeen, they swap back and forth. Oh, we gotta learn. We gotta learn him. Oh wait a second. Is he huff, is is Walter huffing and puffing on me right now? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Charging in on the Star Six. <laughs> okay. This is funny. So what? You're gonna go break out a gun now because. Yeah. Whatever. Pop the star. He's mad. That's how. Okay. So we made Walter mad. He's going to get a gun. <laughs> I don't. I don't. I've shot a Scar Seventeen. I've shot Marks. I think I've shot Walters. I've shot. Uh, actually, I've got some videos. Quite a few videos, probably. Yeah. With it, but I don't know. At least two videos shooting mine. Yeah. Um, did we ever put out the last video that we did? We were supposed to be doing a video with a trigger for the Scar 17. You haven't published that yet? Nope. <laughs> Man. Okay. Do you know how many like videos? <laughs> that, that was made before Trump ever even entered the race. I know, man. But That's do you, how old that is. Do you know how many videos I make that don't get published? <laughs> They're just like in the long line of videos waiting. All I hear is wah, 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 wah. <laughs> this is tough, man. I'm making videos every day. This doesn't count. You're just sitting in front of a camera. That's not making a video. We, we're, are we talking guns? Mm -hmm. That's not making a video, brother. That's sitting in front of a camera. This takes skill, man. No, it doesn't. You, it takes skill to be here <laughs> talking to four dudes. The only yeah. skill in the room is not on the camera. And if you put her on the camera, oh, boy, here we go. Okay, you. so here we go. We're talking about Lola again. <laughs> I don't get any credit for actually marrying Lola, right? Do you know how much skill that take takes? I, I would you know, well. Do you know how much I, begging was involved? How much begging and pleading? I think threats were probably involved as well. <laughs> Lots of guilt trips. I have perfected the guilt trip. Oh, just ask her one day. <laughs> I don't have to ask her. I know. Yeah. So okay. So where's your AK? Where's your um? Where's your scar? He's taking it apart for some reason. I don't know why. Well, I'm but. just sure the charging handle goes on both sides. Oh. There. See, it's on that side. Okay, here. Let's let's put these guys on. So the, the, I'm going to lock your camera on. Okay. And then there's a slot hold on this up, side. Hold it up higher. Hold it up higher. Okay. There's a slot on this side for the charging handle. And then the charging handle on the other side. And you can choose whatever. And you can go you back. Or, you can go either way. One thing I like about the SCAR is it's simple. It's not, you know. Yeah. Five hundred, well, five hundred little detent pins and and the gas tube and all that. Tr see, yeah, see, yeah, he it. Yeah, it flips it around right away. So, okay, okay, you've educated yeah. us. I'll all have right. to, I'll have to bring oh, it out. It's I'll have to bring it out next time. It's stupidly simple. Like, yeah. Practice, no, I, I do like the scar. I like the fact. You know what I like? I like that it's got a um, you know, side charging handle, man. Yeah, yeah. but. Uh, once again, it was that was one of those guns that just took. It seemed like it took forever for them to figure it out, and when they did, what what happened? I mean, I don't know. It just it's went away again. I guess I don't know. It's used. I think so anything that's weird goes that route. I mean, you know, what's the most popular rifle out there? Isn't it you know either the AR-15 or the AR-10? Isn't that what every all these guys are using? AR-15, right? AR-10. Yeah, AR-10 is still kind of an oddball in the world. Yep. When you go to yeah. find parts and things like that, it's, mm -hmm. and there's three or four different iterations of the AR-10, so mm -hmm. um, there's not parts con commonality like there is yeah. with the AR platform. So, um, yeah, and I think that that's the reason why it's so popular. I mean, ultimately, with everything, the people like people choose, and so even nations and all that kind of stuff are just going AR-15, man. With the military, there's so much politics involved that. Um, Common sense doesn't play any part in the selection process. So, or you would, we wouldn't have the AR-15 or M16 if that was the case because it would have okay. went out 40 years ago. Right. So here's the complaint. Like, so someone made this comment: scars and Tavors are too pricey. So I think that's maybe the issue there. Yeah. They're expensive. Yeah. They're expensive. I disagree. I don't know about the Tavor, but the scar is super value for money. Well, super value. It's a real. It's a real military rifle. Yeah. I mean, it's it's made for business. Okay, yeah. so Mark, you're saying that the Tavor is not good value for the no, money? No, no, no. I, I don't know. I only had my Tavor for a short period of time, and I didn't torture test it and all that stuff like I've done with the SCAR. Uh, a SCAR, 100%, pick it up, go to war tomorrow with it. I, you know, there's no doubt about it. It's just, it's been tested. It's, it's a super value. Yes, it costs more than a 
$900 AR-15 that you can buy at a million different places. Absolutely, it does. But it's also worth that to me. Right. Yeah. yeah. I mean, just all the things that it can do, like they're talking about being able to change the, the reciprocating handle. All of the things that you're able to do with that right out of the gate. You don't have to change anything if you don't want to. Everything functions perfectly. You know, I've run so much different ammunition through both a 16 and a 17. Mm -hmm. You know, especially for the 17. Now, you could maybe make an argument that there are some uh, AR-15s or you could build one, uh, you know, for, for the same price or maybe a little less than a retail SCAR 16 would cost you. And it would run just as good and be just as accurate and be just as dependable and all of that. I do not believe you can make that argument for a 30 caliber version. No. Uh, that's as lightweight and as, I mean, it's just, I, I don't know, in my opinion, it's just the perfect 30 caliber, uh, weapon. Yeah. And I think sometimes like, um, okay, people want to know what caliber the scar is. So you can get five, five, six and you can get, uh, um, or, or seven, six, two by 51. Yeah. I can, yeah. yeah. 16 exclusive five, five, six. And, yeah. So the thing, the thing I think, right, when you're getting into the gun game and you start to buy guns, um, depending on where you're coming from in the beginning, you get what you can afford or you, or you buy things that maybe you can't afford it, but you get it because you think it's really cool. So you get all the cool stuff. <laughs> and as yeah. time goes on, you start to get more practical <laughs> or you get, or you get jaded. Yeah, or you do get jaded. But if you do start to get more practical, I think you come to the conclusion like what Mark has come to, and even you have, Walter, with, with guns like the SCAR, that even though it is more expensive, it's worth it, and it's a better value when you look at all these other guns that you bought. Because maybe you bought an AR-15 for, I don't know, 600 900 bucks, and then you spent a lot of money putting things on it to make it something it. that it doesn't really become. Right. And you still wind up spending the same money that you don't necessarily get back if you sell it. Because it doesn't matter what you put on an on a AR-15. I don't really think you're getting your value back. I could be unless, wrong, it's, right? unless it's something exclusive or, or, you know, or it's a Knight's Armament or something like that. That's, that there's not thousands of the same thing out there. Yeah. I mean, because even if you're putting things in there like triggers, like what I would do is just take those damn triggers out. Yeah, yeah. I mean... Right. I, mean, I don't know if people do that. Like a lot of guys, Mark, for example, is this kind of guy. He buys an AR. It has a good trigger in there. He takes it out immediately and replaces that trigger. <laughs> you know, so when you sell it, Mark, do you take the trigger out? Um, yeah. If I sell it, I don't, you know, I don't sell too many of the ARs. But yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't leave my trigger in it because it's probably a, Two hundred and fifty dollar trigger that I'm going to get maybe sixty bucks for. Yeah. Screw yeah. that. They can have a mil spec, yeah. you know, grind and stomp for. Uh, yeah. So, what do you guys think about the trigger that's in a scar? Is that trigger good, or do you have to replace them? Well, let me just say you don't have to replace any trigger, and the scar trigger on the seventeen especially is very good in my it's opinion. Bad. No, okay. It's sub, it's sub MOA, but now are there better? Absolutely, yeah, there are yeah. better triggers. Yeah, so you replace yours on your scar, right, Mark? Yeah, matter of fact, someone, uh, some internet YouTube guy did a video on it. It <laughs> probably should be out there somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, no, we, okay, yes, we did. We did do that. You probably have changed that trigger again since then. No, definitely have not. Oh, you have it. Okay, cool. No. All right. So, yeah, so you have the shooting sight trigger in your scar? At this time, I do. Oh, Cool. Okay, there you go. So I'm sure I'm sure uh, our friend from Shooting Side is like, yeah, where the hell is the video? Huh. So one of these days it will come out, I, or I'll just I redo also it. Have, I also have his Scar Armors tool, which is legit. Uh, wait a second. How did you get that tool, man? Yeah, because I didn't let it leave Tennessee, jackass. Oh, <laughs> you bastard! <laughs> I thought I, I thought I grabbed that tool on the way out, man. You know. Yeah. So Walter, did you change your trigger? No, it's all stock. Everything's stock on this. Okay, so and you don't feel like you need to change your trigger? No, not really. I mean, I'm not doing anything that's going to require that kind of a trigger. So, myself. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, so there you go. I mean, it depends. You know, depends on who you are and what you're doing with it. If you want to change yeah. the trigger. All right. So, anything else you guys want to talk about? Unfortunately, we lost we lost fresh kid ice. I don't. You know, I don't always talk about celebrities that have died. 
but you know. Well, wait till Tom party. Hanks. When Tom Hanks goes, you'll. T I mean, not Tom Hanks, but Tom, Tom Hanks. Cruise, you'll talk days for that. <laughs> <laughs> really? Well, yeah. Why you gotta be like that, man? Like that? <laughs> Don't hate on Tom Cruise. <laughs> See, right away he stands up for him. Yeah. So, hey. Uh, yep. Listen, you are the one that when they make the movie of your life, you're going to want Tom Cruise to play you. Nah. Too short. You know, he's, I've seen him. I've seen him. I'll take George Clooney. Too, there we go. Oh, you want George Clooney to play you? No, no. I, I, want, I want John Goodman. John Goodman. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, fine. Sure. And, and Roseanne, can be, Roseanne can play that. Never mind. Forget it. Let's see. Uh, <laughs> Yeah. All right, I'm out, guys. Thanks. All right, all right, Mark. Have a good one. All right, yeah, take it easy, man. Yeah, we should probably wrap it up. I don't know how long we've been going. We've probably been going for like a, a good time out there. We had, you know, good conversation. Steve, yeah. do you? What are you guys up to over at 904, man? You guys have been putting up some videos, <laughs> dude. I I was just uh, I've literally spent all day putting videos up. Um, I'm about eight videos ahead of where I'm sitting. So I mean. I mean, every two days we got videos coming out. Oh, you're and a monster. All, and a lot of them have you guys. <laughs> Sweet. Okay, yeah, we've been oh, sharing hey, them. What's people up? are mentioning on the on the chat there about AKs. I'm a, definitely an AK fan too, so I got a bunch of those. So yeah, um, just because I, I have a scar doesn't mean I've uh, I've I've went to the dark side. Yeah, so. we'll do we'll do some <laughs> kind of AK thing at some point. I mean, there's so many videos that we have. Oh, to and do. I got a pile of AK pistols too. So yeah, Ooh. and Steve wants to know. I, I guess there. I don't know if we. And should uh, I also about. have a Draco too. <laughs> Okay. I thought it was a Draco. I, I saw I'm Draco. Listen, would you? I have a Draco. Yeah, a Draco. Yeah, Draco. Draco. Is that like Draco? Is that like Draco Noir or? Oh, that's like Draco the Dracula Draco. Yeah. Oh. yeah. Okay. <laughs> Whatevs. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. So yeah, we will do an AK thing. And what's the other thing? We were supposed to do something uh, with with um. We were supposed to do a versus video that you were talking about, right, Walter? Well, the Fostec one. Yeah. yeah, yeah, the Fostec. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll bring the 16 out, and I'll bring the Fostec out, and then you're going to bring out the... We were supposed to do an AK video the months ago. Yeah, Lola says we were supposed to do an AK video months ago. Lola, Lola, Lola. For you guys' information. Well, we can do that anytime do... you want. But yeah. It'll, yeah. It'll, it'll... <laughs> do you know how intensive these videos are? Right now, we've got that... Uh, <laughs> We've got that um, STEM video up, and we yeah. almost died making that video. <laughs> well, you can't wait till two thirty in the afternoon to start. Yeah, we almost died. Yeah. Yeah. We almost died. We almost got <laughs> killed to death <laughs> making that video by the by the insects and monsters that live in, in freaking Florida in the swamps. And cupcakes is the only food. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> See, I brought a sandwich, so me and Will were fine. We brought a sandwich. We were good. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah, we got a bunch of videos to do at 904. I encourage everyone to check out 904. Right, guy. Right, um, Steve. What's that? Yeah. Um, anything else you want folks to check out with you? Subscribe to the channel and all that. Yeah. Subscribe to the channel 904outdoors.com.net. Whatever you want to put in, it comes up. Yeah. Awesome. There you go. <laughs> so then, what what do you guys want to plug? What do you want to plug, Walter? What do you guys? What are you and Will Killer Keller up to? Same thing we were up to yesterday, I guess. Yeah. Uh, Making guns. Oh, we got the website things. The, uh, yeah, so Sten Parts should be secure now. Yeah. Okay, for anyone looking at that. Okay, so StenParts.com is running good now? Yeah, yeah, we got that okay. sorted out. So. Yeah. Cool. All right, all right, cool. Yeah, we got to get that going. Um, so that's basically it, the, what you want to talk about, right? Yeah. I mean, right. hey, if, if you want to do um, the AK thing, um, I can, we can, next time we get together, I can bring a pile up there and we can. I gotta make a. Um, I gotta make. I gotta do a forty-seven okay. though. Yeah, I don't have a real on forty-seven yet, so maybe I'll have to get off yeah. my butt and make a. Yeah, we need. Out. Yeah, we need an actual full auto. Yeah. Yeah. I, so, yeah. I got. I, I got enough. And stuff I vote. To, I vote that we go hardcore with it. It needs to be uh, SBR full auto. Okay. SBR, we, we can do a meltdown video. Suppressed. <laughs> <laughs> we need to throw everything into it. Okay. Really like it. Bolt, so it goes really fast. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, I mean, I got I got plenty of parts. That's not a problem. I got lots of receivers and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah. 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 So um, let's make like a really special, fun one. Uh, now Lola is saying she wants it to be a two-part video. You guys, okay, whatever. <laughs> Listen, well, people don't realize how we make videos. Walter comes over with a bunch of guns. We have a bunch of guns. 
you know, if Steve comes there, then there's a bunch more guns. Right, right, right. There's like a lot shoot, of guns. And you only shoot five of those guns and take the rest home. Yeah, so, and we're yeah, like, okay, yeah. what do we make a video now? Because we got all these, we got like 300 guns here on the Hacienda. Yeah. You know? Oh. So, yeah, but it's it, it's always fun, and, I, and you know, I enjoy doing it like the fun way. So, yeah, we'll, we will definitely do that. All right, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call it a day. I think it was, you know, we, we got some stuff out of our system here. We talked about some stuff. Right. And uh, I hope everyone got their questions answered. If not, we'll get back to it at some yeah. other time. You know, I want to thank everyone for tuning in. I want to thank everyone that sponsors the channel, Safety Harbor Firearms, RAND CLP, Andrews Custom, and, of course, Big Daddy Guns that provides the broadband here and the studio and all that kind of stuff. I want to encourage everyone to check them out. Um, check out Big Daddy Gun stuff on social media. Um, I'm posting up stuff, posting up stuff for them on social media all the time, as well as they're posting and doing all that. So also check out Safety Harbor Firearms on social media. They're on Instagram, Facebook, all that good stuff. Check out 904 Outdoors on social media. You know, we oh, hey, somebody's it. saying we need to do an annual shoot for our fans. An annual. An annual shoot. Yeah, we have to find a place to do it because we're not doing it at the Hacienda. <laughs> no, no, no. Because no. <laughs> it's going to be way too crazy. I do. We should do something like that. We just need the to find a venue. Do what? The yeah. goats could work security. Uh, yeah, the goats. Yeah, okay. The goats the will goats. be getting cooked. <laughs> <laughs> okay yeah. um but we you know what we should do something we should figure out a way to do that find a range and make it happen right and uh invite people to come down and hang out with us all and shoot some cool guns and talk yeah absolutely we'll do that so yeah i, I to get back to what i was saying i want to thank everyone that sponsors us i want to thank the folks that support us on patreon we're patreon slash hank strange so definitely check that out we appreciate your support and um that's it for me be safe out there peace